All right, I'm going to pick up the recorder here. I've already gone over the major indices. I'll just uh, I'll just leave it as that. Okay. Let's get back to the slides. Trade ideas, and I'm going to have I emphasize the caution here. Check earnings before trading. We should do that all the time. But it's absolutely imperative we do it now because we are in the height of earnings season and it could be very short term. Um, one of the good things that you can get from being in a trading room with other people is that when you post it, and I had one happen to me a number of years ago, I posted that I was entering a trade. Somebody said, hey, do you realize it reports after the bell tonight? And I went, no, and I immediately exited. And if I remember correctly, uh, that saved me with a uh, a very painful down gap I would have had overnight. All right, long trade ideas. Let's come on over here. On TC two thousand. Let me go to a longs. Bring it up here. All right. American Airlines Group. Kind of around the bottom breakout. Let's see. Does it have 10% here? Uh, yes, it does. 11%. It's around the bottom breakout. Could easily go up to decreasing 200-ish. Uh, I'd watch for a move here to this $30.25 level first. Uh, but earnings are on the 24th. Oops. Don't think I could, well, the possibility exists you could get in and out before Thursday. But check out whether it's on the afternoon of the 23rd or morning of the 24th. Either way, you would be out on the 23rd. You could trade for three days uh, here. Apple. 10.30 for the uh, earnings report. It has been looking pretty solid here. Um, could you go long in this environment here? Lord only knows. Uh, the only problem we've got with any of these, and, and the reason I only have four or five, or I say six on the list, is because most of them that are decent looking are extended. The others are pulling off the bottom and have not established uptrends yet. PKG, though, is one that had an uptrend, did a pullback. Uh, it does report on the 23rd. So be careful. This would probably, you might want to look for a gap above the 110 level. It would maybe make a run after earnings to the 120, 118 and a half. So put it on a watch list. Um, RC, uh, RCL on the 24th. Watch for a gap, maybe moving up, maybe for moving down. Uh, telephone reports on the 28th, which is next week, so you got this whole week to run. Uh, watch for a possible breakout here around 38 and a half to 39. And last one I have on the list is Yeti. It moved up over 32. We did a bullish engulf, kind of a high wavy uh, thing on Friday. I think that it's, it's giving me every indication it wants to go to 36. So, Dan, can you hang on towards the middle of next week? Uh, possibly. Possible. All right, let's go on over to the shorts. I only have 10 on this list here. Accenture, that's a report again until December. One of the reasons why it's uh, most of these are on the list is because they've already reported. This uh, this guy is up at the upper part of the channel. I'm looking for it to potentially do a rollover and move to the middle, to the uh, bottom part of the channel. Apache, um, solid move down, rebound. Let's edit this puppy. Let's look the color. Let's do red. Set that as default. And you 
you're going to guess what I'm going to draw here. Bear flag. This could be, if you look at it, 50% retracement. This could be a an inverted uh, J-hook forming. If it does this in the following. Stochastic Taurus I says it wants to pull back. The candle, if we get a confirmation on Monday or Tuesday, and we get down below, say, this $22 level or so, it could be a possible short. DD, again, did the same thing, although it looks like we've already got confirmation on this one. And I'm going to take this. It's kind of the move down. There's our bounce up. And now we're in the uh, breakage here. Going to have to watch for any kind of um, potential support around 64.75, that level, and see if it continues to go lower. FMC, same thing, move down, bounce. Looks like it's trying to roll over. Stochastics RSI gives it every indication that it could roll over, but it hasn't done so yet. MasterCard, we went on Friday, a little short there. And it looks like it could go, you know, first level is line of defense around 269 to the second level around 264. Micron. Micron did a rollover. A little bit of sort of support around 43 and again around 41.85. Another possible short would be OMC, although this one looks like it's just very gentle. It did a reversion to the mean bounce. Um, so this one would probably be one of the weakest that I've got on this list. I hate to say it, but Starbucks has been a short for a while here. Moved down, went sideways for a while. It tried to hold this 89 and a quarter level for quite some time, and then it gave up the ghost. Went down to 83.50 level, which I had already had marked out uh, a while back and did about a 50% bounce up to that 89 and a quarter level. Looks like it wants to go back at least to 83.50. And if we don't stop there, 78.85-ish is a target level that I'm looking at. SPGI did a try to hold the 50, drop to the 100, went all the way back up to the 50. If we drop again, we could go down to the 236 level or a, or possibly all the way down to the rising 200. And the last one on my short list is Symantec. We had a break on Friday. If I go to a three-day chart, you can see it. And if you go to a weekly chart, you can also see it. But it looks better. Um, you can see it a lot better on the three-day chart. If we broke 2275, Katie... You know, Katie bought the door. We probably got about three bucks uh, lower. All right, let's go to look at the week ahead. Sixty-day trial offer for either hit and run candlesticks or right way options. If you want to do a two month trial, if you're never have never signed one up, go on here. Thank you very much, Aaron. I did see that on the list. There's almost nothing. Can I put up the long list again? Um, how about what if we do this? I think I've got the earnings list out there. There's the whole economics and earnings and everything. If you want the actual uh, ideas here, or the only two that don't have Short-term earnings are Apple, T, and Yeti. Ah, oh, thanks, Aaron. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, you can get two months for 49 bucks in either Hit and Run Cattle 6 or Right Way Options. But Doug's also told me he has a special on um, Right Way Options. 
Let's bring that up. All right. If you go to, I'm going to go ahead and log out here so we can look at it. If you want to go to right way options, come on. Right way options. If you want to sign up for a quarterly membership, semi annual, or annual membership, and use the code save 50 this is only good for new members save 50 you can get 50 percent off of the quarterly semi-annual or annual subs subscription trying to help people out on these tough times that we're in it's added an extra 20 percent on top of the uh, promo code that we had here all right uh if you want to follow me, I'm on Stock Twits, Top Gun Trading. <laughs> uh, oh, can you do two trials, one for one and one for the other? One for each room, yes. Um, they are separate. So you could do uh, right way options, do it for two months, let it expire, then do two, uh, two months for, assuming it's still going on, uh, for hit and run candlesticks. And then uh, at the end of that, decide which one uh, fits your needs the best. All right. Uh, good. Stock twits. I do post rather occasionally some stocks that I see out there on that. Um, YouTube, primarily once or twice a week, I'll post some stuff that, I'm, uh, that I've got there. I do have a lot of material that's already out there. And if you go ahead and subscribe to it, um, you can go, let's see, let me find, all right, here's my uh, Top Gun Trading, here's my video, and I've got my favorite chart patterns for both day and swing trading that I did last week, uh, I've got the look at the week aheads that I've got going, I did a recent um, addendum to the Round and bottom breakout, uh, an observation I had, a very short 20-minute presentation. I did something a few weeks ago on the T2122 and how I use it. Um, I've got things on, let's see, publicly learning on trading gaps back in April that I did. Members e-learning back in March uh, that I did my Top Gun trading uh, charts and patterns which kind of was rehashed a little bit with these uh, and updated here on the la uh, last uh, Thursday, I believe it was. Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, Wednesday. All right, so give it a look-see. Uh, I think there's some really good stuff in there, but then again, I'm a bit prejudiced, so don't take my word for it. Look at it yourself. See, uh, see if you agree. I think you might. Now, I'm going to open up for non-stock specific general questions. Uh, we, we're always trying to help the members and help the public at large. We're, we're kind of giving back because we got a lot of people helped us on a, along the way when we were trying to learn. Excuse me. <clears throat> and there are a lot of people trying to rip people off out there. Uh, Charles lost twice on Friday. It's going on cocktail on Friday. One minute. I'm just going to drop. I think. Okay. Um, Charles, uh, you you'd like to? Okay. Let's let's go back up here. Uh, I can do that. Here's my stock twits. I'll post it. Sorry. Nancy, and here's YouTube. Pretty easy to remember both of them. They're Top Gun Trading. Um, 
Charles, ha have you been trading on a one minute chart for a while? And how have you been doing? Uh, the first thing that hits me is that a one minute chart is probably, well, not too good. But yeah, and especially in this market, the one minute chart is very choppy. You don't get a, a trend. Now, I did notice that you talked about 4, 10, 15, and 30 minute uh, charts correlated. Um, and you were trying to go long. Let's, uh, let me bring up CRM here. I'm not even going to look at the, uh, the charts. Um, let me look at a five minute chart on, on CRM. What time of the day were you looking at, uh, Charles? Morning. Well, up through 11 o'clock, this is a solid downtrend. Um, let me bring up my... Uh, See this right here? This is the 8 and the 17 on a 5-minute chart. Now, when I will trade a very, very short term when I'm trading the futures. I use eight, uh, a 610 trick, uh, tick. Um, so it's six ticks movement. So that's not a lot, but I always keep a five or a 10 minute chart on the side and watch it. And I try to trade in the direction. If you were trading in here, I would only be looking longs, sorry, shorts. In here, we're getting, um, let me get rid of that real quick. Do that. See if green shows up well. Yeah, right here. This is only kind of a bear flag. I'm seeing that as a bear flag unless it can sub establish higher highs and higher lows. So in CRM, I would not have been trading long any any part of this one on the day. Now let me say that there's one other. Sorry, there are two other considerations that you should have probably taken into account. One, it's a Friday. Friday, I, I've done journaling for my trades, and I don't know what yours are, but Friday, when I did my journaling early on, was my worst day of the week. I have no idea except it's probably, you know, increased volatility uh, and the like. So. I stopped trading except on Fridays except in the morning, and I only took the best of the best of the best setups. And, and in that, I did not necessarily do a journaling, but I did a, um, a tracking by day of the week, how much money I was making in the futures by day of the week and time of day. And I turned my weakness into a strength because I was only taking the best of the best of the best. Well, suddenly I would be saying, you know what? Why am I not doing that for all of the days? Probably because I'm impatient and I just, you know, don't have enough patience to stick around to get the best of the best of the best, but I should. Anyway, this one is no way I would have traded CRM because it was not in any uptrend, we did a retest here and maybe between 12 and one, you could have done a counter trend trade. There's one other consideration. Friday was options expiration for the month of October. Definitely you're going to see a lot of volatility and you're going to see a lack of movement. Now you, a lot of times you'll get movement like it did here in the morning and then nothing but job. So what, what a lot of time happens, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not going to say normally, but a lot of time happens, you'll get a movement and then you get chopped. And all what they're trying to do is they're trying to get a down movement here 
so that they can roll out their options for the current month to a follow-on. They may even rally it all the way back up here and close flat. There's a lot of shenanigans that go on on options expiration Friday. And unless there's some overriding reason to trade on options expiration Friday, in fact, I don't believe I took any trades at all on Friday. I just sat there and watched because it was squirrely from the beginning. Let me show, bring up the diamonds and see if that's, uh, yeah. We, we basically got ourselves into a downtrend, but we weren't really getting enough oomph until around midday and I'd already quit. Um, CB, personally, Again, Charles, you got to, you're going to have to figure out what, what works for you. Maybe if you did some paper trades or or whatever and kind of watched it and, and go back. Maybe if you uh, can do that and figure out whether it, it's good or bad. But CB on Friday, I tried to reduce my size of my positions and my frequency um, in trading on any Friday. And if it's expiration, options expiration Friday or quad witching hour on Friday. I really don't like to trade at all. In fact, I believe I took off early on that day. I, I stuck around for a little bit to see if anything happened and I went uh, to help my mother. She needed some help by mother's 88 or so. See, the sell off at the end of the day was not good on the diamonds. Uh, okay, looks like we've, Aaron says, I find I sell well in the AM on Friday, mm -hmm. and often take trades into the close, and have a buy sell on a day that are supported by weekly data. Okay, um, I tend not to want to hold over the weekend. I, I don't like to hold overnight a lot, and definitely I don't like to initiate a trade on a Friday. Um, and hold over the weekend, but that's a personal preference. All right, one stock, one stock only. Tell me whether you're long, short, or looking long or short. We've got 112 people in here right now. Whoopee! Nice, nice, nice. I think we had a bad tick here on Friday. All right, Betsy wants to look at L.A. Dodgers, I mean, uh, Lad, Lithia. The first thing that pops out at me is, Betsy, this only has 170,000 shares per day on average. It is 130. Ed will argue with me. He says it's enough because he uses a different calculation than me. He goes through the math of saying, well, it, it does enough monetary volume with numbers of shares times the price, and it's good. And that's great. I don't have I don't have the intestinal fortitude, patience, or whatever to go through to do the math. I just look at it and said, if it has less than four hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand shares, I don't even trade it. I I filter them out of my list. So if you go over here and look at personal, and I have a list of all stocks and ETFs, and if you look at my scan here of tradable stocks. There's the 450 average over the last month, 20 days. Has to have an average to range of greater than 25. It has to be greater than five or less than $10,000, which is basically stuff that institutions can buy. That's my universe. If it doesn't fit inside that universe, I don't even see it. Because you see here, I have 1,496 stocks or ETFs out of the two. 2,483 there. I eliminate almost half of them. So it reduces the amount of bandwidth. With, um, now, I, the other problem I've got here is it's right in the middle. This is, and, then, and you see with these low volumes, you'll probably get wide spreads. And one of the reasons I'll say that is you've got lots of tick, uh, wild ticks out there tails. So you wanted to look at TMHC, Taylor Morrison. 
What do you think I'm going to say there, Betsy? You tell me. What's the first thing you notice there? Good volume. Good ATR. Where are we? Yes. So what are we going to look for? See, he didn't need my help. He knew exactly what it is. We're going to look for a pullback. Where is it going to come back to? Lord only knows. What happens... I just do right here. I'm going to use the quad lines. It's the uh, quick and dirty fibs. Somewhere I don't really want it to go below 26.50 or so. The more gentle pullback, the better. I definitely going to lose a lot of interest below 26 and a quarter. So you're going to keep it through earnings, 10.30. Okay, you're already long. I did not know that. Sorry. Uh, have you taken any profits? partial profits now that um, now that we have no no commissions you can take some partial profits there you've taken a third okay all right and you feel pretty good about it and residential should have been doing well with uh, interest rates going down all right let's look at Aaron wants to look at Amazon short but could go long. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's look at a three-day chart. Yeah, the one problem I've got here, and if I've got a, if I have to look at it this hard, I, it's probably worth passing on. Whoops. EMAs, we're kind of in chop. You can tell that is, is we've got a, the confluence of all the moving averages right in around the seventeen hundred and fifty dollar level. And if we go and look at a weekly, you can see how we're kind of gathering around the 50-period the, um, moving average. If I let's go here, let's go to the weekly there. I can see that. If this one breaks 1700 it probably drops at least $100. Now, one other thing that I like to use here, Aaron, is I use an area chart that is weekly, and I set up the 40-week moving average, which would be a 200, 10-week moving average, which would be the 50, and watch those and see how we're doing. These are just, I use moving averages, folks, just to help visualize the trend. I do not use them as support or resistance or tell me when to go long or when to go short. I do not use them for trading. I just use them where other people may be trying to jump in. Maybe the institutions might be using them. They're probably using price levels, and that's what I'm going to do. But it does help visualize where the trend is. And the trend in Amazon, unfortunately, is down on a weekly. Uh, Ron Lo wants to look at AMRN. Aaron, uh, let's see again. Let's also look at the EMAs. It has been in a downtrend, and now it's trying to form a bottom. And bottom formation is a process. And we have been as low as 14, as high as about 17 and a half. And we're somewhat in the middle. And we may, we haven't made a higher high on the longer term, but if we are using this 15 and a quarter level we made a higher high what I'm gonna to want to see before I want to go long and I'm I'm seeing you're wanting to go long as well is I want to see it pull back here form a bottom and start to go higher and so what I would be looking for there is to somewhere by somewhere near the move back up which is a J hook. Now, Ed will argue with me, and he's right that the traditional J hook is not formed and completed until you pass the prior swing level. But that's not necessarily the place that I want to go long. I want to go long at the first indication that we have a bullish buy signal here, and we're starting to move up, and this prior swing level is my first target. If you go back and look at the videos that I have posted on 
um, on my YouTube page, you'll find that I talk about that extensively. All right. Let's look. Nancy R wants the MDB short. Um, one of the problems with MDB, good volume. The earnings date is okay here. The problem that I've got possibly is it may be trying to form a bottom here. The time to go short was, was on the pull off the top here or the break of about 130. It's probably too late to go short this move down. What you're going to probably want is a bounce up and then a roll over and move down. MongoDB. It has changed from a super long. This is three days, five day. Yeah. So the momentum out of this stock is gone. But the problem we've got is that there is some sort of support forming right here around 117. Okay. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times we don't discover these until they're too far gone, especially to the short side. The short side happens so quickly. DHI, which is why being in the room, somebody will pick it up and they'll post it out there. And we also have the LTA scanner out there helping us find trade candidates. All right, DHI has been in an uptrend for a while, along with most of the residential construction. Um, are you long, Dolores, or are you looking long? You're long. Fantastic. The We had a couple of good long opportunities here back at 46 and a quarter. I missed. Here at 48 and a quarter, I missed. The break over here above 50-50, I missed. The hammer and move back up here, I missed. So congratulations, you could probably tell me. Um, just keep riding it. One thing that's telling me we're getting a little long in the tooth is that we have been going great guns for about just under three months. It reports on 11, 12, and it may be priced more to perfection than you would like. Make sure that sometime, that if it doesn't give you a sell signal before, uh, before earnings, take some off the table, put some in your pocket, and maybe put more in your pocket than you keep and be kind of speculative on the piece you keep and then be happy. Even if it gaps away, just be happy that you had a great trade. Um, right now, until it breaks the 17, you have no fear whatsoever. And I'd say 17 on a closing basis. It did close below there on the 16th of uh, September. But that was at the bottom of uh, the Mind Stochastics RSI. Good bop here, uh, first part of October, but it's waning here. Okay, let's look at DBO wants to look at Z for a short Zillow. Um, Zillow is attempting possibly to bottom here. You can see that from the EMAs. I have an EMA only chart. So I can see that with the confluence here. And we've had the eight cross above the 17. The way, I, the way I'm going to have to, what I'm going to have to see from Zillow, and it's coming up on November, so I would probably have to see Color here. Let's go to red. I'm going to have to see something like this, followed by a bounce up, 
followed by a rollover. So I'm going to I'm going to necessarily need to see the rollover bounce and for it to go back down and transition to a, a, a downward trend again. Right now, we've just barely broken the down the downtrend. And we're transitioning to an uptrend. So I don't believe this is your ideal short at the moment. The time to short, unfortunately, was back here during the last earnings cycle. And maybe on the bounce and break here when we broke this level around 36. I don't think, I think it's too late to short for now. Personally, Jonathan B. wants to look at O Long. Yep. Uh, lots of REITs have been doing quite well. These were ones that by the dip worked. Right now, you're going to have to see another dip. Something like, well, let's see what we got here. Hold on a second. Let me change the color again. That was a good buying opportunity. Last week, we had a buying opportunity there. Possibly if you wanted to break out, but ones that are this long in the tooth, a little bit difficult. This was a buying opportunity. Possibly the breakout there or the breakout back here. Most definitely this pullback here and pullback here. This one was pretty sharp. That one would have been tough to buy, although buying on this move up would not, when it recaptured it, would not necessarily have been that difficult. It pays 3.45 dividend. That's what a lot of people are after. It's one of the better real estate uh, retail REITs out there. Another one that's been quite good has been Triple N. Of course, in 16, they've had a huge, huge drop. Triple N is based here in Ottawa, Orlando. Um, Triple Net, just like O. But O is probably the King Daddy Rabbit of those. Um, I'm, I'm getting a part behind. Okay, I'm going to have to cut off any future symbols. Or we'll, I'll never get out of here tonight. Uh, CB wants to look at Mickey, Mickey D's. And he's looking at Mickey D. I have a bull put with a short on the 200 $200, I'm going to assume. Um which is about where the 200 period moving average is. There is some support right here around 205. The problem I've got, look at the balance of power. It is distinctly negative from its last uh, report. It's coming into earnings and sees really no buying strength right now. People are dumping it ahead of, uh, institutions are dumping it ahead of earnings and EMAs are down. So it's in a downtrend. Just be careful with that one. <coughs> Excuse me. This one is, has had its major run. So we got the first part of September. I have no idea what went on on 9, 10, 11, 12. 9, 10, did they warn or something like that? But there was probably news that caused this to happen. That was the change of character. And then the rally back up here to 215, but this is just to kiss the 50 goodbye. On a longer term basis, here's the area chart of McDonald's. Over the long, long, long term, McDonald's will be fine. It will, it, it has been very adaptive. But we may get a significant pullback, which we do occasionally, you can see here. This could be one of those significant pullbacks. Just be careful. Um, Jay is looking at, oh, let me get rid of this, get more chart. CRWD, 
CrowdStrike, one of the newbies. All right. Um, before I would, I'd say yes, it's in a downtrend. Before I would go short, I'm going to need a bounce. You're going to need a rally. Where are you going to need a rally to? Somewhere at this level or higher. Maybe as high as 60. And then a rollover. Earnings date was on the 5th of September. That's when it went down. And you noticed that the couple of weeks leading into earnings, price was down. Bob had waned off quite a bit. And Bob is changing a little bit here. You've got some bottom fishers here. And what they're doing is they're fishing around where the initial IPO price was or a little lower. I can see a bounce coming. But then make it give you a sell signal when it rolls over. I can see what you're looking at, though. Uh, BMY long for Bilyanko. Mm, yes. One of the good drug stocks here, Bristol Myers. Um, Got to wait for a pullback, though like what we saw. Here was a breakout, pull back and breakout, pull back again. This is a perfect one where we had a hammer and a move up. It did come back and go below that and close below the um, 17, which would probably have shaken me out. Here we jumped the creek here around uh, 51 and a half. So Wait for it to pull back, establish a bottom and a buy signal, and then go long with a tight stop. Again, boring, but that's the way to trade most of them. Let's see, expiring October 25. Hafiz wants to look at DXC. Long. Long? Oh. Uh, no. I do not give you my permission. <laughs> you can go and do whatever you uh, see fit. But let's look at the EMAs. These are all pointing down. Have been for quite some time. From, from the 50s, and we're now in, the, we've been cut in half. All right. Um... I have, a, I have a Canadian trading friend of mine. He's a, he's a very dear friend. But he keeps trying to pick the bottoms. It's like trying to catch a falling knife. You're only going to cut yourself. Wait until this earns your money. Wait until, again, here comes the boring. Higher highs. Higher lows, and then it's proven that it's going to make a bottom. There are no proven bottoms here, all the way from back here in August. We've all we've had a couple of reverses mean trades or uh, moves, and this was one of the the biggest one right in here, but it was only a reversion to the mean. They happen a lot. Don't get fooled. This move right here would have been successful. If it had not gapped down, if it only pulled back a little bit and then gone higher, there's it needed to get above this level again, and it didn't. So all bets are off. No long on DXC. Roku. Look at it. Roku long. Well, Roku reported. Yes. Did it report 11.6? I thought it... Did I not see that Roku reported last week or did something? No, it didn't report. Well, I tell you what, it had this... What 
does that go down to? That's a bad tick, 106.18. On Thinkorswim, I see 125.39. So it did go as low as right about here. So most of this wick is bad. So if you see a, a tail or a, or a top wick that's that long, go to some other charting program and find out whether it's valid or not. All right, this one's not valid. It's It got below the volatility stop. And one of the problems we have here, again, is we've established ourselves a downtrend make it form the bottom, give you a sell signal, and then go. Put it on your watch list, but it definitely is not, I mean, this, this candle formation here on Thursday, Friday is not bullish. Not in any way, shape, or form. Now, the EMAs are starting to point up, but a pullback is in order. Cisco long for David. Well, you're going to guess what I'm going to say, David. Got to make a higher high and a higher low. Is it doing that? No. And you can see that by using my visualized moving average. The 8 and the 17 are both going lower with the 8 below the 17. Until we can get the 8 above the 17, and establish higher highs, I would want to trade it even with your money. Now, let's look at this right here. Is it possibly trying to form a bottom here? Maybe. Just maybe. But, we've also got all of this overhead. I would want with 1113 there's a, there there are better ones out there. I would wait for this one to to report earnings, get above 50, come back a little bit, show us where it's going to uh, have good support at and then go higher. If you're hung up on or interested in trading Cisco. Right now yeah, I just say um, I, I couldn't I couldn't go long Cisco. Procter and Gamble. Uh, Roger. I know you guys are gonna get tired of hearing this, but it's in a downtrend. The eight is below the seventeen. This looks like a very solid distance between the two. Now the only way one could trade this is a counter trend trade. Two things. If you're not if you're not very nimble and you haven't done it a lot, I would advise not doing it. There is a possibility. I'm trying to be so negative here. There is a possibility that this thing will rally up to about 120. But this may just rally up to 120 before it kisses it. That goodbye and goes south. Now, this one is setting up for a classic blue ice failure. Blue ice is where blue, the ice is the 50. It went down, it went down to the 100. It's bouncing and it will try to get as close to the 50 again as possible and then roll over and go south and drop to the bottom of the lake. Well, where's the bottom of the lake on PG? Well, the bottom of the lake on PG could be this area right in here, or more likely, whoops, I didn't mean to do the ellipse. What I meant to do was this one, and it could either be there, Or more likely 110 and 110 if it happens fairly soon would be where the rising 200 would be and that would be a target but you're probably going to get a little bit of a bounce here 
and it'll set up for a good short. All right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy the short. Thank you very much. Uh, Airy Long for Reggie. Good evening, Reggie. How are you? Alexandria Real Estate Office REIT. 2.58%. Uh, uh, it only tra it does trade quite a bit actually 570,000 per day it does have probably a bit of a spread which is why the wicks maybe wait for some sort of uh, are you going to try to hold this one longer term if that's the case I'd look at a weekly chart and in fact on the ones that I uh, tried to hold longer term I look at an area weekly and try to do that. Um, Costco is one. You can see that's a really, really nice long-term chart. Um, what's the other one? Um, DLR. I actually have preferreds from that. And they've been going higher. D L R P dot. Sorry. Um, okay. Yeah. Nice solid move up from twenty five. Now it's time for me to exit stage right on this one. Take my profits and harvest them. Okay, um, Charles, look at it. Pins, P I N S. Pinstripe? Oh, Pinterest. Uh, what am I going to say, Charles? I'm going to say, uh, uh, not until it forms a higher, higher, higher low and I'm going up. Right now, I'm in a solid downtrend. Definitely don't want to go long here. I don't care. There's a difference between the stock and the company. And they're... Try not, try not to bottom fish. Do not get away from the idea of buying low and selling high. The idea is to sell high, uh, buy high and sell higher. Buy after you've had a... a in an uptrend... We have a pullback and an uptrend. By doing that, you have the tide is at your back and a rising tide floats all boats. And if that current is going in and you're trying to swim out, you're fighting it and you'll drown. Eventually it'll get you. Now, Bill wants to look at GD short. I do believe that that looks like it might be a possible short there, Mr. Bill. And fairly soon. I am going to put that on copy to shorts. And I'm going to set alert. It's got a target around 170, 169, or even 160. Thank you very much, Bill. I love that one. Brian K. asks a question. Hi, Brian. How you doing? It seems that a lot of patterns are usually four or five. Whoops. Because I moved it up and down, I've lost part of it. Oh, dear. Four or five days of up and down. Do some people just play that pattern that the candle, candle signals at? There's nothing, well, if it's four or five days where it's going up and down during that five, but if it establishes a trend for four to five days, yes. That's the definition of swing trading. Um, 
if you're talking about stocks gyrating between price levels over a four or five day period, that's chop and you could get killed. Now, GD did a strong move up here, did a pullback and then moved up. In the, back, in the past, that, that gap up was a buy. Again, looking at 2020 hindsight, and it's a bit of a gapper here. This one, I'm probably, I'm going to want it to get to 173.50 to 173.25, and hopefully it bounces and then rolls over. I got time for a couple more. A A O I. AOI. Didn't tell me whether it's long or short. Right now it's in no man's land. 11 6. Yeah. If I have to look this hard at it, it's it's one to pass up. You've got overhead resistance around 11.75. And potential support on 975 and probably not going to be able to or want to short a $10 stock. I would pass on AAOI there, uh, Dan. Bill Bowers wants to look at Cuz Long. Cousins. Well, yeah. Possibility if Tried to change it around. This 37, 70 to 75. Um, yeah. This area right here with high volume, 39 bucks. They could be trying to go to that. Don't know what you're looking at as far as percentages or dollar amounts. But I see what you're looking at. The problem, let's see. Yeah, I'm just looking at here. We kind of why did we go back down over here? There was probably an interest rate related dip. I don't know. Uh, was down to the initially. I'm trying to read here to see can see if I can get this. Lines of GD, LNT, uh, dark side. Yeah, I worked at a, with, for competitors here. Yeah, we're, I'm going to what I want to see. I'm going to put this also in my short list. But what I'm going to want to see is a bounce out of here, just like a GD and knock. Knock ought to be on the shorts. Let's see if Raytheon's also going to be on the short. No. Raytheon and United Technologies did a somewhat merger because UTX is spinning off Carrier and some other stuff. Uh, Carrier and Otis Elevator, and so they're going to United. Sorry, Raytheon is going to keep the uh, defense contractor related stuff. Hello. Uh, they sold off their helicopters a while back, uh, and they probably only have Pratt & Whitney. Okay, folks, thank you very much for showing up. I want to remind everybody, for the foreseeable future, every Sunday night, 8 p.m., be here, or be square. Aloha. Take care. Thanks, Sully. GD has earnings on the 23rd. Again, go back to what I said earlier. Before you make any trades here, look for earnings. Look for earnings. All right. Take care, and I'll post this to the um, the YouTube channel as soon as possible. Take care.